I need to find my baptism certificate. It'll help me find my family. Hello, mister. Ah! This isn't one of the slave plantations. This is England. <laughs> but it's inhuman, Robert. And it's not the way we do things here. If Susanna goes, I go too. We go together as man and wife. Sign that. Sign it, and I'll allow you to stay in the village as Mr. and Mrs. Bate. Their purpose is to delay the passing of the 10-hour bill. A bill that merely seeks to ensure that no child works more than 10 hours a day. We don't abandon children injured in our service, Robert. It can work for me. Fine. He'll have to prove himself adept at something more than plate carrying. Liverpool's that way. You go that way, cross that field. Did you get to see Catherine in the warehouse? I think it simply killed your sister. Listen, they never do. She was my sister. But we need proof. I want to see her. She'll be in a grave by now. If Timpley finds out we know what he's done, then we'll be in danger. You think he won't do it again to cover his tracks? So how do we get proof? By our time. And as I've got to be here for an extra two years now, I've got plenty of that. some progress. Is that... <laughs> Did that just stop automatically? <laughs> it's more than some progress. It's not finished yet. It's... I'll apply for the patent. As soon as I get back from London. Well done. eventually. Now that you've signed the document, he has no reason to send me away anymore. freely without coercion. I love you. And I want to be with you. Looking for a girl. She came here from Liverpool Workhouse. Yeah, you'll have to make an appointment at the mill office. 
I've come a long way. We don't deal with Liverpool. Well, you did. According to this, she left it in my parish church. Her name's Esther Price. I'm her sister. She ran away. Tommy? Oh, uh, Esther's sister. All the way from Liverpool. I think we better go inside. Oh. Take that to into the kitchen, Tommy. Oh. Ah. I'm sorry. My son runs the mill and he's away at the moment. If you'd like to leave your request in writing, he will deal with it in due course. Cost me the best part of a week's wage to get here. It won't be possible for you to see her today. Why not? She's serving a punishment. I told you she ran away. Not that she'd returned. When can I see her? My son makes those kinds of decisions, and as I say... Is this a mill or a prison? For apprentices, it's a home that their parents failed to provide for them. What time does she finish? Sometime after nine this evening. She'll be praying for the ten-hour bill, then, like the rest of us. You'll need to go now. Don't tell me what I need to do. There are writing materials over here. If you wish to leave your sister a note, I will make sure that she gets it. I thought it wise not to let Esther speak to outsiders. Thank you, Mr. Timberley. Tommy. What did you tell her? Just to go to the office, miss. Are you sure? That was all? Yes, miss. Master Robert's in the middle of some very important business, and the timing of this visit is very inconvenient. So don't breathe a word of it to Esther. I'll tell her when it's more appropriate. Off you go. I'll leave my name and address. I'll expect her to write and I'll know her and... Of course. Father Collins will read it for me. Susanna gets married, there'll be a spare bed and we were wondering if Lucy's sister Catherine could take it. And only uh, before we bother Master Robert or anyone else, we were hoping you might be kind enough to write and make an inquiry about her. Ask how she is. Mr Timberley? Mr Timberley! Do you remember Lucy's sister? Yes. Can you find out how she's faring at the workhouse? The girls have asked me to make some inquiries. Will you see if she's fit for work now? Uh, see what I can do. Come and sit beside me. You know, I was ordered to take your sister back to the workhouse. On the way, I was talking over my shoulder, trying to keep her spirits up. When she leapt off the cart and ran into some woods, I searched, called out her name. But she must have preferred to take her chances than go back to the workhouse. I've now discovered that she's been found dead in a field about ten miles from here. I am so sorry. 
These things are always hard to accept. Right now, Mrs. Craig is having to accept that she may soon lose her dear husband. We mustn't add to Mrs. Craig's sorrows by burdening her with ours. Do you understand? say it gets easy with time. She told you about her sister. Thank you for taking the trouble of finding out, Mr. T. At least she knows now. Susanna, I'm very happy about you and Daniel. Robert will look after you. You can count on it. Yes, mister. And I'm sure your child will grow up to be a, a credit to all of us. Samuel. Mm. Um, Catherine Garner. She came with Lucy. And she was ill. And you wanted her to stay, but Master Robert said she couldn't. Get back over there! I'm so sorry for the impression. Three of us. The Greg and Sons, we've always taken great pride in the compassionate and Christian treatment we afford to the children in our care. This Christian. Your son made Lucy do this to me as a punishment. And all the time, his sister was rotten in a field. Robert did not. Please, Master, bring Mr. Timberley to justice. I'll look into it. You have my word. Thomas. Good news. We'll be hearing no more about ten hour days. It's been twelve hours from under eighteen. Sam! Sam! Robert's back from London! <clears throat> and? And all juveniles must have age certificates from now on. And two hours schooling a day. But no prison for any employer who breaks the rules, and only four inspectors to enforce them. Four for the whole country. Barely affect us. And abolition? August 1st next year. Can you wait that long? So how will it work? In stages. Over seven years, they'll stop being slaves and become apprentices. This would be a £20 million compensation fund. Where is he?
You better not be interfering again. It's over. It's easy in the schoolroom. Don't blame me if it's stone cold. Something wrong, Mr. T? Master Samuel passed away this afternoon. I'm sorry. I tried. Nothing I do makes any difference. You got rid of Charlie Krause. I went up before the peak, and I was fined. And I ran away to Liverpool, and wasted my time on some wild goose chase. I'm no one. You're not no one. And neither was Catherine. And you didn't waste time in Liverpool. My sister was here. Why didn't you let me see her? You can see her when your period of punishment is over. And when will that be? When this has grown? Or is there something else you're adding? What do you mean? I know. I know what you are. You fat liar. Twenty hours for insolence. You'll never see her at this rate. Come on, Esther. Let's go on. Where's the letter she left? There is no letter. She can't read or write. She hasn't had your advantages in life. She's out there. Somewhere. She's out there. She saw the message I left and come looking. And you were wrong about me. Because everything I've been through was worth it. Have you heard? We lost the 10 hour bill. We should never have put our faith on Parliament. We need to take power into our own hands. Organise industrially. Every mine and manufactory united for shorter hours. Demonstrations, strikes, whatever it takes. We need to set up a new national society, and I want you to be our man here. We'll organise a meeting for Sunday. I'm getting married on Sunday. What? At last I saw you with it, Wibsy. Susanna. What time? Noon. Right, we make the meeting for three. I need to be in Stockport for eight o'clock. Old oh, Susanna disapprove. We'll have the whole evening. Don't you think it's too late? We've only lost a battle as all. Despite Robert Gregg gloating in the lobby at Westminster, this isn't over. All these men have signed the documents. All the more reason for another meeting then. Don't not risk the jobs. Not now. After a hundred thousand could march on Whimsy and be ignored. Have you signed? Uh, I'll have a family to support come Monday. We all have families. Yeah, we don't all have men contributing a penny a week to pay our wages. Your father will be spinning a... You gotta go! No! No, Pat. I'm fine. We're just talking. This might interest you. We had a visitor, a woman from Liverpool with quite a story to tell. We have received a report, the contents of which mortifies and disgusts us. It seems a young female apprentice who must remain anonymous for now. And we invite the poor wretch who was subjected to such Medieval. 
medieval punishment to contact us directly, after which we will be pleased to publish the full details of her ordeal and help reunite her with her family. It's me? It's about me and what he did to me? Did you tell him? Your sister told him. She didn't give up. How did she know? Tommy told her. Mrs. Gregg won't be pleased. Let's go. Esther. It's anonymous now. Hearsay. Dr. T needs to speak to him in person before he can publish. If you let him name you, then we're not going back. I don't care. He's organising a meeting in the Horseshoe Sunday, 3 o'clock. We'll be there. And you disobeyed me. On the day of my husband's passing, you broke your word and told Esther about her sister's visit. After everything I've done for you. What do you have to say for yourself? When you heard how Mary Prince was kept from her sisters, you cried. You are a most ungrateful child. I see now I made a mistake with you. Take him away. That man, the man in the meeting, the ten hour bill man, he was right. Get him out. And your slaves will be free of their apprentices. Being an apprentice with us is the best a boy like you could hope for. Not anymore! Come here. No! Get Mia. No! Ah! Get off! This ah. belongs to Master Roberts. No, it belongs to me. He gave it to me. Ah. Get Keep off me! It's mine! Ah. No! Ah. Sorry for your loss. Funeral's to be Monday. Stop the mill for the afternoon, which will have my father spinning in his casket. A wedding present. A share of the patent for the loan. 50-50. With good reason. I want to build on what my father created. Together, we can make that happen. Take it. You deserve this. And you have a family now. For Susanna. Thank you. I do wish you both the very best. It'll be about the funeral. Look, don't cheer if he announces a day off. Look sad and keep your mouth shut. Have you seen Tommy? He'll be at the big house. Oh, but all the other domestics are here. Why isn't he here? You will have all heard by now of the passing of my father. And I'm sure he's in all your prayers. But before we've even laid 
Master Samuel to rest. It appears John Doherty is coming to disturb the peace of our grieving community. He's already provoked walkouts in Stockport and Lees. So I want to make one thing clear. Any man attending this meeting tomorrow is in breach of the document and will be dismissed. One person profits from John Doherty's wild schemes, his strikes and his newspapers, and that person is John Doherty himself. How does he profit? As Daniel Bate. He knows him better than anyone. What was Doherty's wages, Secretary of the Spinners Union? Tell them. One pound thirteen shillings. And what does he pay himself now to produce his propaganda rag? Three pounds a week. Three pound a week. The poor man's advocate, not so poor. His only concern is with promoting discontent to suit his own ends. Am I right? I hate the man. But I love what he stands for. There is a better way. And you... You can't stop a man listening to another. Not on a Sunday. We're free men on a Sunday. I'll be going to his meeting. You all should. I'll be there. And any man that I see there will be asked to leave the village and find work and lodgings elsewhere. You've been warned. Oh, where? What have you done with Tommy? Where is he? What was in the envelope? He tried to buy me off. I'll find work in Manchester. I knew you're blacklisted. Well, further afield then. Do you expect me to come with you? Leave George and Miriam behind. Well, you think they can't manage? They're not babies. You're not the mother. It's this one you should be thinking about. Oh, like you were just then? Yes. Because our children deserve better than this. How much was in the envelope, Daniel? Does it matter? Daniel. How much? A lot. I'm sorry. You told me I should take it for you. off the wedding, I'll, I'll not blame you. But I have to go to that meeting. He bought my silence once. I was too afraid to stand up to it. The baby. He belongs to his brother, Willie. No. <laughs> No, it doesn't. The baby's ours. The future could be too. Daniel, will thou have this woman to thy wedded wife? To live together after God's ordinance 
in the holy estate of matrimony. However, this is Anna. Wilt thou have this man to thy wedded husband? Did he tell you what I offered him? No. Was it, was it a dowry or guilt money? It was a sincere offer. Your skills, my capital, we can do great things. It's science will make the world a better place, not dreamers like John Doherty. Well, it's not Websy, is it? Daniel, thanks for coming. And Susanna, congratulations to you both, please. Come on in and take a seat. It's locked. They've locked us in. They have. I should be celebrating my sister's wedding now. We all should. Master Robert's scared. I'll tell Doherty what he did to me. You know, indentures are the only documents we've signed. They say nothing about locking us up on Sundays. No. Mm -hmm. She's right. It's not fair. It's, it's not. not. Are we going to put up with it? No. 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 Are we? No. 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 Come on, let's get out of here. Unluckily for you. Get back. Back upstairs now, all of you. I mean it. I will thrash each and every one of you. Ha! <laughs> Lucy's sister. She's dead. The apprentices blame us. Why did they blame us? When I was taking her to Liverpool, she ran. Escaped. I, I, I couldn't stop her. Turns out she's the pauper they found dead in that field. At Siddington? Well, why didn't you tell us? I took pity on her. I thought she'd survive. Siddington is the opposite direction to Liverpool. Well, she, she must have travelled some distance before she fell. And you must have kept the apprentice fee for yourself. I'll pay it back. That child was in our care. No, miss, it's a lynch mob. <laughs> and his men. We must wait for the law to take its course. Wait for the law? Yes. Because without the law, we're just barbarians. And with it, what are you? My conscience is clear, Esther. And you can trust me. I promise you. Where's Tommy? 
He trusted you. He thought you were on our side. But when you took him into your home, you weren't nursing him. You were hiding him. I nursed him and we saved his life. Like you hid my sister. John Doherty was right about you. You're a hypocrite. I released you from that room, Esther. And if I hadn't taught you to read and write, your sister never would have found you. Somebody, stay here with Tim, please. Make sure he doesn't get away. The rest of us, let's get to the horse ship. This meeting is one of many being held to form a new organization, the National Regeneration Society. And what we propose is this, that on the same date that the new Factory Act comes into force, March the 1st next year, that every manufactory operative in the country shall work eight hours and eight only. Then they will walk out. They shan't ask permission from Parliament or beg leave from their masters that after eight hours of toil, they shall simply go home and see their families. If we are united, the old outdated system whereby some work beyond their strength for inadequate wages, that system will end if you are united. Esther. What is this? Oh, your apprentices, by the look of it. Do not is it true one your employers this room, not your ages. Your ages to squeeze years of free no, labour out of you? it is not true. Or, take them back is to it the true now? Is Esther! It tr I'm your sister. Esther, the cruelest... Mir 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 Miriam, children, I'm not going to from seeing your family. Have you been looking for this? I knew you immediately. You look like a mum. Do I? She died when you were born. It hit Dad hard. He couldn't cope, took to drink when he could afford it. He broke his arm when you had to go to the workhouse. I didn't think I'd ever see this. I doubted myself. Here it is. Here you are. Uh, March the 8th, 1816. I am 17. We always marked it. Every year. <laughs> March the 8th. <laughs> That's funny. It's the new law. It starts in March. For a whole week, they can only make me work 12 hours a day. Then I turn 18 and they can do what they want. This was to get my mouth shut. <laughs> Sorry, but Doherty's got another meeting to get to. Tell him to wait. I'm talking to me sister. <laughs> If you allow that man to name you, he could ruin us. He'll embarrass you, perhaps. Make a mockery of your evidence in the factory commission. Business depends upon its reputation. If you ruin that, it won't just be me that you hurt. You'll never work in the cotton trade again. She can live with me and my family. Can you afford another mouth to feed? Can you find her a job? Get her off the streets and out of the workhouse? Can you do that? Stay here. 
I'll wipe out all your fines. This is a beautiful place to live. You can have a family here. Have a good life. What about him? And Susanna? Can they raise a family here? If you keep your mouth shut, yes. Even though I signed the document. And I intend to join Doherty's new society. That's what it takes to reach an agreement. Esther! I can look after you better than John Doherty ever could. I want to tell my story. I want people to know who I am. If you go to the yard tomorrow and burn those documents, I won't mention certain things today. Esther, are you ready? My name is Esther Price. I was born in Liverpool on the 8th of March, 1816. I am 17. My mother was called Maria and she was a seamstress. My father was called Tommy and he was a sailmaker. I've got an old sister called Martha. I, I needed to know this. I needed to know. It's not here. It must be. My father believed there should be trust and mutual respect between Milhand and Master. But what's good for one is good for the other. And so as a tribute to his memory on this, the day of his funeral, I've decided to burn the documents that I asked you to sign. smile upon us. Posterity shall applaud us. And when our hour comes and we have to quit this veil of tears and go to our great account, we shall look back to the struggles we have made in the cause of justice, peace, 
and kindness. Our last moments will be cheered by the reflections that we have contributed something to chase vice, injustice, and oppression from the earth. And we shall go down to our graves with peace and satisfaction knowing that we have bequeathed a brighter and a happier inheritance to our children than it was our lot to be born to. Winning Top Boy returns for a new series and old friendships are sorely tested. That's this Tuesday night from nine. It's a year on from the shootings, but things are certainly not over. The conclusion of Southcliffe is next. <laughs> 